Yes, Lord. That we all made it. We yes. made it through 2022. Yes. Despite the challenges, despite the despite the up and downs, mm-hmm. you, we, you made us more than conquerors. Hallelujah. And here we are in 2023. Here we are. Lord, we pray. As we, we pray that you give us grace to walk with you. Amen. In the name of Jesus. Amen. As we hear your word week in, week out, may we be transformed Amen. into that Amen. word in the name of Jesus. Amen. May we always behold ourselves in the mirror of your word. Yes, Lord. And become more like Jesus. Amen. We pray that this year that your word to us will not be scarce. Amen. In the name of Jesus. You will Amen. give us bread in season. Yes, Lord. Father, we thank you because we know you have planned great things for us this year. Yes, Lord. For these and many more, we say thank you and we we'll receive them with thanksgiving. Hallelujah. Blessed be your name. We worship thank you. you. Jesus. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 Hallelujah. You're welcome once again into another session of Bible study with Transformation Sanctuary International. Now, um, last uh, year, we, we, <laughs> okay, right, okay. So before we go into, we did, did dive deep into um, our study today. So how was your Christmas? How, how was your Christmas? Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. How was your Christmas? Um, restful, restful, yeah, peaceful, peaceful, and um, had a lovely time with the family. Had a lovely time with the family. Yeah. Any more adjectives in terms of how was your Christmas? Anybody? How was your Christmas? Morning blossom. Type it. How was your Christmas? Was <laughs> hmm? well, so- sunny, sunshine, oh. sunshine. Very very hot and um. That was good. We enjoyed ourselves. Okay. Good, good. Um, well, we don't know if we should be happy for you because it wasn't sunny here. But um, <laughs> okay. <laughs> we, we. No, but I was ill the first three days because people were coughing on the plane. So when we arrived, I had fever. I was cold. And Florida oh. was cold, which was the very, they said that was the very, very first time. In yeah, They've exactly. never seen it like that before. So I was cold mm. and I was sick for three days. But after that, mm. the weather, you know, it was it was good. Okay. We were everyone was fine. We enjoyed ourselves. We did the best. At least um had my uh, sister-in-law cooked Nigerian food. So I was okay. Oh. <laughs> okay. Mm. Wow. Mm. Awesome. Oh. Awesome. Awesome. Loretta. Awesome. Yeah. Um, anybody knows how Christmas was? Mommy, how was your Christmas? Tosi? How was your Christmas? Christmas was peaceful and very relaxing. Time to okay. catch up with extended family is always good. Hallelujah. That's Larita. Well done. Facebook. Well done. Lovely to have you. Lovely, back. lovely to have you, Mrs. Johnson. Thank you for that. Lovely to have you on board. On board. Let's take one more. Anybody else? Anything for Mommy. the more? Uh, son, how was your Christmas? Mommy has un- <laughs> unmuted. I think she wants to. <laughs> My son. Yeah. I, I was working Christmas Day. <laughs> okay, no, we mean all the all the holiday period, which was the, the totality of Christmas. Everything was okay. We give glory to God. Amen. And, and, uh, it was it was really okay, except yeah. my husband wasn't here. But oh, oh. <laughs> <laughs> so. That's why it's okay. Mm-hmm. It was good. Okay. Ah, good, good, good. That's good to know. That's good. I mean, that everything was okay. Not the fact that your husband was not around, but everything was okay. Yeah. So we thank God. We thank God for that. We thank God for life. We thank God for hell. And we thank God for his blessings over us. Okay. Tonight, so we said last year we studied half of the year. We finished the old, new, new Testament, the few books left in the New Testament, which we had been completed from the year before. We completed that by June. And then we started character studies. And towards the end of last year, I kept saying to us that God will need to lead us in terms of what we need to do next for this year mm-hmm. and all that. And having prayed and all of that, um, I sense very strongly in my spirit that Lord still wants us to continue with character studies. Mm-hmm. So we're still going to do that for this year unless the lord changes it there's something else which i saw which i feel hmm, the lord may also be leading us in this direction but 
Um, as it stands now, it will be, we're going to be looking at character studies unless the Lord of course changes. Changes that. I trust what we studied towards the end of last year. I think we finished up on Kings. How many Kings did we study at the end of last year? How many Kings? We did Saul. Saul. David. David. Solomon. And Solomon. Yeah. We ended the study on Solomon, King Solomon, the wisest and probably the most foolish king. And all that because anybody who leaves God is foolish, you know. Um, just like Samson, when we study him, Samson will be the strongest and yet at the same time the weakest of men. It's amazing how these things happen. So for tonight specifically, we're going to do something slightly, something slightly different. It will still be a character study, but it will be something slightly different. And when the Lord laid it on my heart, I was like, oh, this doesn't sound like what we normally do. But if the Lord is leading us that way, of course, he is the Lord we just follow. Now, first question then. Who was the first character in the Bible? I mean, huh? Mm-hmm. What do you mean? First character? Adam. Yes, Adam. in the Bible. Adam. The Holy Spirit. Let's take, there is enough time to take all our comments. So I don't want to rush it. I want to hear everybody. So you said... Adam. 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 Okay. Um, yes, Tosin, what did you say? Well, I was going to say Adam, but the first character would be God, no? First character will be God, no? <laughs> okay, I'm, I'm not sure. I I've need, made, I need I'm not sure I've made that person called God, no? <laughs> like, is it Adam? Yes. God created heaven. So, uh, Mommy Blossom said Adam, yeah? Um, so, Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. So we, have, so, we have Adam, we have two Adams, we have one God, no? And then we have the Holy Spirit. Um, any more for the more? I think you also you said God, yeah. but you didn't put no. Okay. Yes. Can I give reason? Give a reason, yeah, for saying it's Adam. Because um, so when you okay, go on. Because God has no time and no, no end. So that means he character. Can. He didn't say if it's human or not. I know. Okay. God has no time, because no so end. He couldn't have started. So then that means that you can also say that Jesus. Was the first character or the Holy Spirit? Let's go there. Oh, the Holy Spirit. Okay, good. So his argument is God um, has no beginning, has no end. So, so and if we say if we say God, then we might as well say Jesus. We might as well say the Holy Spirit Holy because Spirit. these three characters are these three characters are timeless. No. So, sorry, I changed my mind. I disagree. Sorry. Okay, go on with your because, disagreements. Because yeah. we didn't. It says in the beginning, God created. Was God. So what, it was if we're studying okay. character studies in school, mm-hmm. we will say, Who is the first person God created? Ah. We, we weren't aware of Jesus and the Holy Spirit till after that. In the beginning, no, God, the Holy Spirit was in verse two as well. Yeah. But, but, but verse, verse, two, is the first verse one, one that first in the beginning, verse one. God. in the beginning, God, God. that's it. I'm just going like saying hello that, but I can't say that. In the beginning, God. God. And, and, and just to just to draw context to what my son said, of course, he's correct in, in the timelessness God of the, the Trinity the and, and all that. But when, when it comes to Bible study, you want to go to scripture, you want to point it out, you want to Scripture gives the final answer on it. And that final answer is in Genesis 1 1, which Tosi has read and quoted. So even with Tosi's word, it wasn't God, no, it was God. God. Yeah. Yeah. So in the beginning, God. God. That's the that? first character we have. Now, of course, um, uh, Mrs. Johnson has expanded that to God the Father, the Son, the yeah, Holy goodness. Spirit, but we know it was God and all that and because it's the new year it's the new year the way my heart i prepared characters for us to study throughout the year 
But the way my heart led me was that we should actually start with the very first character in the Bible. Start with God. And that's what, that's who we're going to study tonight. So my next question then, and this is where the answer will be different, and I just can't wait to hear what you're going to say about this. My next question then, welcome, Sister Christiana. Good to have you here. Happy New Year. Happy New Year to you. Wish you were here, sir. Great. So, who is God to you? Huh? Who is God to you? If, if someone were to ask you to describe who God is to you, not to other people, not to... No, I, I, not the theology and the exegesis and the humanistics and all of that. Just, just simple. Who is God to you? Let's 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 have a go at that. Yes, ma'am. My Maker, the one who made and formed me. So I, be, as in, He owns me. So He's my mm. Maker. You know, when you make something, you yes. own that thing. Yes. Your Beal. Yeah. Mm. My Maker, my owner. Yeah. Mm. The property owner, my maker, my, the one who owns me. So that's who God is to you. Okay, more people. Cause, oh, God doesn't go for it. Yes. The person I have to answer to. The person I have to answer to. Oh, wow. Okay. There's something deep in that your answer, which I'll come back to later. But yes, the person you have to answer to, the person we all have to answer to. Any more for the more? All in all. My all in all. You know, when Minister Biola said, my maker, I thought, way maker, miracle mm, worker. Like then when she said, the person I have to answer to, I couldn't find a <laughs> something that, but well, my all in all, I'm sure there's a song which is, uh, my all in all, it is well. So my all in all, what does that mean, man? My all in all. You're on mute. You're still on mute, ma'am. What does my yeah. all in all mean? My all in all to me means my my God, mm -hmm. my Father, my mm -hmm. Redeemer, my mm -hmm. Rock, my Savior, mm -hmm. my Provider, mm -hmm. my King, mm -hmm. my Jehovah Jireh. Okay, uh, yeah. Everything. My all in all. Yeah. Oh, wow. My defender. My defender. Okay. My defender. Hallelujah. The horn of my salvation. The horn of my salvation. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> my husband. Mr. Christiana puts my everything in, my uh, in, in, my in everything. the chat. And uh, um, can I tell you the song which came to my mind on that one? Um, on Christian and Sister Christiana's um, message. Um, I think that now most of these songs I don't even know, but when you go to gatherings, parties, sometimes they play some of these songs. That's where you pick them from. I think um, there's one who says, uh, My woman, my everything. So when I saw my everything, that was what came to my mind. But God is our everything. Thank you, Sister Christiana, for that. Please, if you're on Facebook, please put who God is to you, and we'll pick that up. We'll pick that up. Who God is to you. Mommy Blossom, who is God to you? Yeah, the only one who has not given us an answer. The Redeemer of my soul. Hallelujah. The Redeemer of my soul. The Redeemer of my soul. I'm sure there's a song like that about God being the Redeemer. My yes. Redeemer. I can't, I can't. My everything, Sister Christina said, my no, everything. I thought you said the everything. I thought yeah. I said So that's, yeah. Oh, that's really so that's, yeah. Like, so who is God to you? Um, Beautiful for situations. Hallelujah. Beautiful for, you see, that, that that's the problem with all these solicitors. Beautiful for situations. Where, where they go and bring it out from. For, exactly. Beautiful. You know somebody who has read the KJV. You know, for so long, you know, beautiful. That, that's a phrase taken from 
Is it Psalm 48 or Psalm 148? It's beautiful for situation. So um, your son here say he doesn't understand what you mean by beautiful. By beautiful for situation. Can you please expand on it, Money Blossom? What does beautiful for situation mean? Beautiful for all situations. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's it's it, it, whatever the situation. It, it makes dark situations, hard situations. You know, it turns them to be beautiful. It can oh, be yeah. you know rough, this and that. Mm -hmm. So God is beautiful for all situations, no matter how terrible it is he, mm. is always, he always turns it around so that's just what it is mm. he said god who turns around it's almost like that romans 8 28 he makes all things work together for our good yeah something like that yeah turning every situation around he's a god who turns things around okay amen thank you thank you everyone for that it's good to know your view about who god is who god is to you now, who do people, you know, Jesus asked a question in Matthew chapter 26. I've been taking his disciples on an 11, I think it was an 11 hour walk from Galilee to Caesarea. Jesus was very, very fit, you know, mm. 11 hours they walked only to take them into Caesarea Philippi, just to take them there, to ask them a question. That's all. I was, I was the only, he wasn't going there to do miracles or signs and wonders and all that. He just wanted to ask them miracles. Why? Because that area had been known as the gates of hell. Caesarea Philippi had been called before that the gates of hell, the gates to Why? the dead. That was because of the kind of idols they worshipped there and something around the gate. The, you know, when the Bible talks about hell, hell could mean a graveyard. Hell could mean uh, that's Sheol. Hell could mean hellfire. That's Gehenna. Hell could mean Tartarus. That's a place in Israel where they burn the garbage and the fire is on 24-7. So the fire never dies there because they're always burning stuff. And because some of the things there are rotting, they have worms and things like that. So that's why when Jesus was talking in Matthew, he was saying, where the fire died not and the worms and whatever do not quench and all that. Telling people that what you see on earth will exist in eternity where wicked people will go to. So you have Gehenna or Hades, you have Tartarus and you have, and you have Sheol. So Sheol or Hades, Gehenna, or Tartarus. These are different definitions of hell. So, Caesarea Philippi had a reputation of being called the gates of hell. So, Jesus then took his disciples on a, an 11 hours walk to Caesarea Philippi. And when he got there, what was his question to them? Who do men say I, the Son of Man, am? Who do men say that I am? Uh, some said Elijah, some said uh, Jeremiah, some said one of the prophets. And that was where Peter said, what was Peter's answer? You Jesus are the Christ. Christ, the son of the living God. Oh, and Jesus okay. said, flesh and blood did not reveal that to you. I don't know about my father in heaven. And upon the revelation, upon this rock, this revelation you have given that I am the son of God upon that revelation. That's the rock Jesus was talking about there. Upon that revelation, I will my church and the gates of hell, either physical from what we can see, because this area is known as the gates of hell, the gates of hell physical or the gates of hell spiritual will not be able to stand against it. And remember, gates in the Bible represents a place of authority. It represents a place of de 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 decision. It represents where the elders gather, the seat of government, the civic center. Number 10 Downing Street will not be able to stop what I am going to do. That was what Jesus said. So having shared that, I hope you find that useful. 
who do people say God is? That's where I'm going with that question. Who do people say God is? Now, generally now, just don't think about Christians. Think why um, my children have done lots of religious studies, so they will have an, some ideas around this. Yes, to you. Let me say, by the way, I don't mean to be offensive, but let me say what some of the people in my class do. They say God is a joke. They say God is a joke. <laughs> When they stand before him on the day of judgment, ah, we will see who will be laughing. Because you know, the Bible says in Psalm chapter 2, it says, God will laugh at them in derision. I say, <laughs> you're so stupid. So that's going to happen. So, yes, anymore, who do people say God is? What's the world's view about God? So everyone is just a higher power. A higher power. Some will call him the universe and all that. Yeah. So the higher power. Anybody else? Who do people say God is? More, more, more. I'm sure you know there are other religions or no religion or whatever, atheists, agnostics, humanists, and all that. Who do people say God is? What definition do people give to God? The universe. So sometimes they'll say, oh, if the universe is listening, or if the universe is. Yeah, yeah the universe. Yeah. So some say God is just the universe. Now, by yeah, the universe. Tony, 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 yeah, Tony yeah. is saying, as in a way of saying, is the omen. Yeah, so Omniscient? Omniscient, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, so, yeah. but they just use universe. So. But they just use universe. They go, okay, yeah, yeah. Oh, so they just say God is the, the universe, or they just say oh, the universe said, or, or or something, and all of that. Okay, great. Um, so of course we know that some say God does not exist. Hmm. It doesn't exist at all. So we can coin that from those who say God is a joke. So say He doesn't exist, and all there is no God, or humans are gods unto themselves. You know, you're the god of your own life, Frank Sinatra. You know, so number one, watch out for number one, and you are that number one, and all that. Now, others say God exists, but he is distant, he doesn't get involved in human interaction, he is, he is detached, he exists, but he's detached. He, he, he just created the earth basically and just left us to our devices and all of that no that's not that, that that's often i'll get to the religion one next that often is not a religion that is another iteration of he does not exist yeah iteration of he does not exist or okay he exists or he's detached he doesn't speak to anybody you can't contact him he doesn't contact you he just created the world and if we like we can destroy the world if we like we can take care of the world it's our business and all of that so there is that and then and the, and the ones who say that is the is the big bank and then of course yeah exactly like it is the big bang, you know, and it, so again, he's not a person, he's just a, a cosmic activity, something that just happened, and boom, the world came, the world came, the world came to be. Um, we did watch a lot of big bang theory when um, a few years ago, Sheldon was really, really good. Um, I don't know if you've seen Big Bang Theory on E4. Um, I'm sure it's still there. They still do it there. Now, others then say God is supreme. He exists and is supreme, but you cannot connect to him directly. You have to worship him through mediums. You have to worship him through other gods, smaller gods, or whatever the medium is. So there are lots of mediums. But one very popular one is a smaller god. So when you see somebody bowing down to an idol, and you're like, but I, it doesn't make sense that you're bowing down to an idol. He'll tell you, but I don't get it wrong. I'm bowing down to this idol because this idol connects me to god. the supreme being, God. And all that, who am I? to worship God directly. Who am I? I cannot. So I worship, and they believe that these mediums were sent 
uh, when the world was new and they came down and did some mighty things and then they were revered and deified and are being worshipped and all of that. So that's another view of, that's another view of God. You know, for, for us as Christians, people are comfortable when you talk about God. More comfortable when you talk about God than when you talk about Jesus. They, 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 there's almost a universal, of course, acceptance. acceptance of God in whatever form that is universe, um, detached, um, too supreme to be worshipped directly, and all of that. People, people don't have a problem with that. But when you bring in the concept of Jesus, that's when you run into you run into muddy waters and the concept, of course, of the Holy Spirit. So, like we said, God is eternal, He's sovereign, He's omnipresent, omnipotent, omniscient only benevolent and some of these things people relate to god is everywhere god is all powerful god can do all things god is all good and all of that and to complicate matters a bit more you then go into the bible and john 4 24 says god is spirit and those who worship him must worship him in spirit and in truth and it was Jesus who said that to us, actually. However, if we begin to look at the definitions we have given to God tonight in our individual lives, there is something which stands out of that definition, out of each of those definitions, which shows us that God is not detached. The universe is not detached. Is not through other gods worship through other gods and all of that. And what is that? Number one, it is the word my, which virtually all of us use. My personal, yeah, my everything, <laughs> <laughs> my everything, <laughs> my all in all, all, in all. beautiful. For situations, um, my, maker. my maker, and all that, I, 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 and whatever else we think God is source. What that then says is for us as Christians, God is not this detached, supreme being who doesn't care about the earth. He is not only involved as God, but he's also personal to us. And not only that, and back to what Tosin then said, Tosin said, he is the person who we will give account to. And that's what we're studying tonight. The personhood of God. His personal attributes which make him relatable to us. Otherwise, why would we study God as a character if he is just a spirit? Hmm. We can study him because beyond being a spirit, he is our father. Personable. He is personable. And we're going to go through some scriptures tonight to see his humanness in those scriptures. Humanity. His humanity. No, well, I, I struggle with humanity. I was going to say humanity, but I struggle with that. But he's humanness. I can't think of another word. You know, what makes him like us? His human, that's the one. His human life quality. The guy is writing an exam, so his brain is still turned on. Um, his brain is always turned on, to be honest. Mm -hmm. He's really intelligent. Um, his human like qualities. And we're not just going to look at that as, okay, God rested, God slept, or oh, well, he didn't sleep, uh, and all of that. But also, I want us then to look at that human-like quality and look at what that teaches us as human beings. Because everything God did in a human way carries an underlying lesson. I'm sure we all agree that there's nothing in Scripture which does not give us a lesson. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So that's what we're looking at tonight. Let's start this study. And if time then permits, we then go into the fatherhood of God, how he is a father. I think that's something else. I don't know if any other religion, but well, Christianity is not a religion, it's a way of life. Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. But I don't know if there's any other religion 
which gets that close to God as God being their father. You know, we can we can boldly say, my father. You know, I don't know if any, or does anybody know if there's any other religion where they share that close attributes with God as in calling God their father? Anyone? Anyone know anybody? Anyone know any other religion? I don't. Some see themselves as servants, servants of God. Um, some see themselves as, I can't even go near God, I have to worship him through a medium. So I don't know. Uh, and if anybody knows, you can put it in the chat, either on Zoom or on Facebook, if you know any other religion where God is a father to them. Sikh? Sikhism. Sikhism. Okay. Sikhism. Okay. Uh, so do they worship the God directly? Yeah. They don't worship mediums. Yeah. Hmm. Okay. But they would have like a founder, somebody who yeah, is that. Uh, exactly. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. So tonight we are going to start with that, the personality of God. But what we want to learn is that from his humaneness, uh, from, from, from his human-like characteristics, what lesson can we draw for ourselves? And um, we'll see where that takes us tonight. If we finish it tonight, fine. If not, um, we can always continue next week. This is a marathon, not a sprint race. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. That's the first scripture. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. Somebody please read. For us, Genesis 2, 2 to 3. And on the seventh day, God ended his work okay. which he had done, mm -hmm. and he rested on the seventh day from all his work which he had done. Mm -hmm. Then God blessed the seventh day and sanctified it, because in it he rested from all his work which God had created and made. And made. Okay, first question there. Does mm -hmm. God get tired? Okay, I've got a no here. Anybody else? Does God get tired? Oh, come on, people. You can't go silent on me on this one. Judging from uh, God rested from the... <laughs> <laughs> Thank that? you, Tosi. <laughs> yeah, he gets tired he of never, asking. He's true. never tired. God is hmm. never tired. Yes. He just rested so that he can... He is giving and giving us an example that we should rest from our labor. Hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Not mm -hmm. because he's tired, but just for us to take an example. Because exactly. If, yes. That's it. That's it. Son, what did you say? I said that um, he, um, you don't have to be tired to rest. You don't have to be tired to rest. And we know that God is spirit. I can't change that. Spirits are disembodied. Disembodied. They are disembodied beings. They don't get tired. They don't. They, they, yeah. That's why in your fight with the devil, the devil will never get tired. So that's why you can go on holiday too. And all of that. You have to keep fighting him till you see the maker. Um, but thank God we have angels fighting for us. We have God fighting for us. And now that the Lord said, I'll fight your battle for you and you hold your okay. peace. So God is spirit. He can't be tired. He never sleeps. No. He never sleeps, nor slumbers. So what is he doing then? Exactly what mommy said. He's setting us an example that you humans who are created in my image and my likeness, if I can take time off to rest, what should you be doing after your labor? Go take time off and rest. <laughs> Go to Florida. <laughs> That's why we have the Sabbath, mm. the seventh day. Does God need the Sabbath? No. He says, take out that time to reflect on me. Mm. Worship me on that day. Set out a day for the week when you just down tools and you just worship me. You just have fellowship with me. Recharge, regroup, re-energize yourself. And then, of course, continue again. So, yes. So, his human attitude, his human character there was showing us that it is good to rest. So, when you keep walking on and on, on and on, and you are not resting, 
Guess what? It might not be a sin, but you're living in disobedience. You are not being like God, your maker. No one is created to work 24-7, 366 days a year. No one. We must take our time to rest as God did. Okay, so that's the first one. And we got that spot on. Let's go to the second one. Same chapter, verse 19. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 19. Genesis chapter 2. This is an interesting one. Um, Pastor, can I just can I just say before we move on? To yes. That, and I think so. Two things now that that's that really that stood out for me is the the Genesis one one, which was, in the beginning there was God. So mm. we're beginning. So in this beginning, we are beginning with God. Yes. The God is there. That God factor is mm. there. But I think the second thing for me is the fact that you don't have to be tired to rest mm. because most of us. We walk, we do things until we, until we are crash. Not just tired, we are tired. We are knackered. We mm, crash. Yeah. That's when we rest. Yeah. And I'm not just saying this to everyone, even it, apply, it applies to me. Mm. You know, you walk, 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 walk. And you you always think it is when you are tired that mm. you need to rest. Yeah. But God is showing us an example, like every like um, mom and Demison has said, that we don't have to be tired before, to, before we rest. Yeah, so, that's true. And I that's think true. that's true. We don't have to be tired before we rest. And of course, part of that rest, of course, when we mentioned the Sabbath, mm -hmm. part of that rest is not just to sleep. It's also to take out time to reflect, to take out time to worship, to take out time to study, to take out time to meditate, to draw close to God. Because like I always say, God's presence is like a petrol station. You go there, you fuel up, you fill yourself with gas or fuel, whatever it is, petrol, whatever diesel, you go, you know, the moment you drive out of the petrol station, that fuel starts dissipating. It starts going down. And you must always find time to come back again and refuel. And then off you go again. Now, of course, it doesn't mean that you sleep in church also because you don't park your car in a petrol station and leave it there. You fill it up with fuel, but you never move it away from the petrol station. No. You go out, you do the activities, or you always come back to referral and all of that. So thank you for that. Thank you for that observation. Let's go to chapter 2, verse 19. Genesis chapter 2 and verse 19. Does somebody want to read? Does somebody want to read that? Somebody who somebody who wants we read Genesis chapter 2, verse 2 to 3. So Genesis chapter 2, verse 19. Somebody who wants a miracle. Want to read that? Somebody who who's the next candidate for a miracle? Want to read that? Genesis two nineteen. Anybody? Tolu, you don't want to. Okay, I'll read I'll it. Read, okay, I'll read it. Yes, two nineteen. Oh. Okay, mommy, goes on read it, and then, uh, mommy or Muni, you read the next one, and then the next one, I'll give it to us. Hello. Hello. Go on. And out of the ground, the Lord command the Lord God formed every beast of the field mm -hmm. and every fowl of the air yeah. and brought them unto Adam to see what he will call them. Mm -hmm. And whatsoever Adam called every living creature, that was the name thereof. Thank you. Thank you. See, KJV, KJV. Thank you for that. Thank you. So what was the human attributes in there that God displayed there in that? He said it's almost a tricky one. What was the human attributes there? Out of the ground, the Lord formed every beast of the field and everybody of the and brought them to Adam to see what he would call them. And whatever Adam called each living creature, that was his name. What did God show us? What was God's humanness in that? Yes, sir. Um, um, I think he was um, um, yes? devolve, devolve, devolving of powers. Devolving of powers? Okay, yeah. 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 His, his power is devolving his power to, um, to, to human, to human, mm. to say, look, whatever you call. You could be you could call it devolve of powers, you could call it delegation of authority, you could call it um what is you know when you're a supervisor and you delegate authority to mm. so it's just 
something like that, devolving of powers. Devolving yeah. of powers, delegation of authority to somebody else, okay. Deleg- dominion. Sir Christiana said dominion in the chat. Yes, sir. Also shows that, like, he's not, like, we're not robots, like, we are free will and stuff. Hmm. Also show that we're, we're not robots, we've got free will and all that. He says he brought them to Adam to see. Here was God who knows all things, who knows what Adam will call them, all of the animals. He know, you know, God knows the future already. He knows all of that. He knew what Adam will call all of them. And yet he comes and he delegates that authority to Adam. So here is Adam thinking, I'm calling that lion. And he will be called lion. But the guy observing him already knew before Adam mentioned lion that that animal will be called lion. So yes, there's the delegation of power there. But I think much more, do you also see God's humility in that he could have named all those animals himself? Mm. Number two, he knows their names anyways, and yet he sits back. And he says, Adam, what would you call this one? And Adam will say, hmm, elephant. And God will say, look at Oh, sorry, sorry. I mean, God will say, that's it. Elephant. That's the name. So there we see delegation of power, and there we see humility. What does that teach us as humans then? We should emulate the uh, like characteristics of God, so like humility. We should emulate God's humility there, yeah. And uh, um, you know, um, it makes you, it makes you feel good, mm. and in the sense that you know, like if you're in a team, yeah, and out of everyone, your manager says, "Oh, I want you to be the one that will." Okay, like maybe the US team now, and then you're you have to go to somewhere to represent you as the athletics team. Yes. And you were not expecting it. And it just says, oh, you will be the one leading the team. You're like, oh, wow, me. You yeah. know? So it makes you feel good. Mm. And to say that, oh, God in his majesty, you just asked me like, ah, I me, mean, I should start calling, uh, mm. you know, I think it is a shoe that is too big for anyone. But if it if it does come to one like that, you're like, hmm. oh wow, you know, it makes you feel good and makes you want to work more. And oh, it, wants, it, wow. it, it, it makes you want to, you know, like he said, Father, look, what is the next thing you want me to do? Because hmm. you know, this this one that you have given me, I'm happy, I'm really happy. You really made you know, it's like your manager says, Oh, go and do this. I'm like, oh wow, you want to do more, you want to yeah. uh, that, that that's that's the way um that is God's human hum- humaneness. He yes. is humaneness to select you know look i'm not here to be hey 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 the boss 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 all the time mm. like Edison said you know he just says you've got you you, you we're not robots and he's a loving father because it, in the beginning you said what is it was his father so he's following the thread of what you started from pastor yes and yes. he's coming down yeah. to to where we're like oh wow in his human so he can he be humane he's not that mm. Um, the one that that man tried to touch the ark and he just killed him straight away. Like, oh no, sometimes he can be really nice <laughs> and friendly. We can go to him. <laughs> we can go to him. Don't, you know, I remember. don't mess, don't mess with him. <laughs> Thank you for that. Yeah. You know, you know, you, you know that, that that's so profound. And thanks for adding that because I didn't even see that in all of my study. And, and what I'm drawing out of that is his humility. Is coming down lifts us up. Hmm. I don't think that makes sense that God coming down to our level doesn't leave us at the level we're in. He actually brings us up into a level he is at. You know, he 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 said, name them. He empowered him. Hmm. He honored him. Like you said, he singled him out for this great task. It's just so awesome, but thank, uh, and, thanks for that. Yeah, it's just um, the song, you know, but like you said at the beginning, some 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 songs that will come to your mind, mm-hmm. like this. Um, what a beautiful name it is. It said Jesus didn't want heaven without us, so he brought heaven down. He brought heaven, you know, down. so so that he he showed us that 
you know what? When you when you come with me and you're joint heirs with mm-hmm. me, that's mm-hmm. another thing. Yeah, bringing us to his level. This is what you will enjoy. Hallelujah. So Hallelujah. yeah, Hallelujah. yeah. Hallelujah. Awesome, awesome. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So we also now need to go out there and be humble, and we should also be people who empower others. No matter the level you are at right now, there is somebody who your smile, your humility, your reaching out can lift up. And that's what God wants us to do. No matter, you might think, and Gideon said, I'm the lowest of the lowest of the lowest in Israel. God said, but you're a mighty man of valor. And just by the blowing of one trumpet, let's go to battle. 32,000 people followed this lowest of the lowest of the lowest man. So sometimes the way we see ourselves is not the way God sees us. But whatever our situation, whatever our circumstance, we can draw others up. Mm. And that's what God did. That was the example he was showing us here. Okay, let's go on the journey of discovery to the next one, to the next one. I hope we'll be able to put a positive spin on this one. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. Genesis chapter 6, verse 5 to 8. So, mommy, I said you are going to read that. Genesis 6, 6 5 to 8. And then Tosi will be the next one. Yes. 5 to 8. Um, yes. And I read the uh, new trans- NLT. <laughs> okay. The Lord observed the extent of human wickedness on the earth. Mm-hmm. And he saw that mm-hmm. everything they thought or imagined was consistently and totally evil. Mm. That's it. So the Lord was sorry he had ever made them mm. and put them on the earth. Mm. It broke his heart. Mm. The Lord said, I will wipe this human race mm. I have created from the face of the earth. Mm. Yes, and I will destroy every living thing. Mm. All the people, the large animals, mm. the small animals mm. that scurry along the ground, mm. and even the bolts of the sky. Mm. I am sorry I ever made them, mm. but Noah found favor with the Lord. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. So in that scripture then, God being spirit, omnipotent, omniscient, omnibenevolent, and all that. What did we see? What what attributes did we see in there? I think one that we one that we got is um regret. So regret. it's completely the same with us. Mm. Often regret is caused from our own actions. Mm. But for him, obviously he did it and made it perfect, but then like we destroyed it. Mm. So then he felt regret. He felt regret for ever creating man. Not because he didn't create man perfect, Mm. but because man of his own volition chose to fall. Man of his own volition chose to fall and all that. So he said he was sorry. Did you see the bit where he said he broke his heart? Yeah, Just imagine God, a spirit, having a broken heart because of what men were doing. What lesson does that teach us? What does that say to us, people? What can we learn from that? There are a few things we can learn from that, actually. What can we learn from God regretting his action and from God suffering a broken heart because he created man? Anyone? Mm. Mm. Uh, I told you it'd be difficult to uh, put a positive spin on this one. Uh, yes, I think for me personally, um, mm-hmm. God having a broken heart is something you love, mm. you cherish. Mm. That if he does something or the person go, that is when it will pain you 
Yes. Our God loves us so much. Hallelujah. That yes. is the way I see it. Mm. That mm. his love for us, he, he, he made it so that we, he, he, when he created and gave Adam, okay, give names to this. He brought him, he made, he made him, he, he, he made Adam to, to be wanted, you know, put him even on the same level that, so that there won't be any fear for him. Okay, yeah. my son. Give mm. names to these things. Mm. You can imagine now he has put you that that father son relationship or father child relationship, and you decide to betray him mm. with your wickedness. Mm. That's the love he has for us. Mm. Made it, you know, he he said he will break, he will, he will, you know, destroy man. But he still, he found someone. He still found someone. Mm -hmm. That's why we read it up to Noah. Because yes. in the yes. midst of that, that heartache. He, because he wouldn't have looked mm. to see, to look for someone. Mm. He, he looked around and still found one out of the multitude of people. Out of the multitude. Them. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you, ma'am. Thank you. Yes, Tosin, you wanted to say something on that? Yeah, I just wanted to say that um, just because we love something mm -hmm. doesn't mean thing will not hurt us. Yeah. Or will not disappoint us or will not. But, yeah, but in fact, yeah, but like mom said, because we love that person so much they're more likely to hurt us more than anybody correct else. correct else and right. but the love of god does not stop even mm. when he's disappointed with us or even when we've hurt him mm -hmm. so so i'll bring you on in a minute so what do we think <coughs> how do we think god feels then when we go into sin now mm. Is it different? Has he given up on us? Mm, no, he, he will us? never give. Does he not love us anymore? He, he will never give us, give up on give us, up on and us. his love is forever. He so loves how does us. he feel then when we are doing things that he's not happy about? It's painful for him because um, um, he says that, I don't know where it says in the Bible, that heaven rejoices when the sinner turns repent so yeah. repent so they celebrate that but of course it must be painful for mm. for god to see that we've gone into sin i look at it like as a parent mm. if your child is doing the wrong thing you're you're going to be hurt for you if you're not hurt that means you don't really you're disconnected from that person correct and god is never disconnected from us mm. so he will be hurt you know, we often fear doing things. We live in fear of, oh, if I do that thing, God will punish me. Just like children think, oh, if I do that thing, oh, my parents will smack me. My parents will punish me. My parents will take my phone, whatever. But from an adult's perspective, punishing a child is not... You don't feel happy. Number one, you don't feel happy. Doing you it. don't want to do it. You know, it's discipline you've got to, but it's the heart. It's the pain. The grief. The grief you feel. So then you're smacking the child, and maybe the child, after you smack them, are like, oh, you, I paid for my sins. I can go now. I'm happy. But the parent is still hurting. Mm. The pain still continues for the parents. And it's the same with God. People fear him because they're like, oh, karma, or God will punish me because I've sinned. But there's a bigger issue here, and that's the fact that our disobedience grieves his heart. Our disobedience breaks his heart. That's the bigger, that's the bigger issue. Yes, ma'am. Uh, okay. uh, so I, I really... I'll come back to you, Moni. Let Moni. me see where I'll start from. One thing that I want us to establish in Genesis 1.26, said God created man in his own image. Mm -hmm. So when God created us, even though he gave us free will, I guess the, the love he has for us or the, the, his heart will, was like, we will follow in his steps. Mm. 
And like we said, God loves us regardless. But the caveat I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to put into that, that yeah, it hurts God when we sin, just like it hurts parents or guardians or, you know, people that when, you, when, you're, when your child or when somebody who is close to you does mm-hmm. something mm-hmm. very hurtful. Yeah. And the more the love, the more the heart. heart. Yeah. But one thing also that God, that, that we, we don't see here, sin has consequences. Oh, yeah. And when we sin, mm-hmm. God remains God. He remains mm-hmm. love. But because our sin has drawn us away from him, wow. or he cannot do anything because there's a separation, yeah. that's when that's, we now feel the, the consequence mm. of that sin. Mm. And until we mm. come back to the place of love, mm. we will be there, you know, thinking God doesn't love us. No, it's still, his love is constant. Mm. But our sin draws us away. And because the Bible says is of a purer highs to build iniquity. Yes. Even though he still has our love, he, he still loves us as much as it does either we sin when we are in sin or when we are not. He cannot do anything to help us mm. when we are in that sin yes. unless we come back. Unless we come back. So sin for sin is actually for our not what's the other word for benefit? Uh, so the, the opposite of benefit. Ben- yeah. <laughs> That's the benefit. Yes. That's <laughs> Detriment. Sin is a detriment to us. Yes, takes us away from that place of love. Yeah. And God cannot bridge his own principles. principle. So he cannot do anything mm. when we are outside of the place of that love. Mm. Mm. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much for that. Uh, Mommy, you had something you wanted to say, and then I have one more contribution on that. Yes. And then we'll I, I, I wanted to look it at this way that God, the love he had for us or the love he still has for us. And because we continued to sin, you know, man continually sinned and Mm. was doing contrary to the will of God. And the Bible tells us his eyes are too holy to behold iniquity. And therefore sent his only begotten son, Mm. Jesus Christ. Jesus Christ. Mm. Whosoever we call upon the name hmm. of the Lord, we be yes. saved. Yes. So he, he, he made a propitiation for our sin hmm. through Jesus Christ. And that is to show the extent of, of love, his love. Yeah. He yeah. had for us. Amen. Amen. You know, the Bible says that it says, and Noah found grace with God. So when God saw that out of this whole multitude, only one person qualified for grace. And God saved that family and started a whole new generation through him. In bringing Jesus, God extended that grace to all of humanity. So it wasn't just one man now. It was for all. But we have to accept that love, accept the terms and conditions for us to enjoy the benefits of the grace that Jesus has brought to us. Now, one more thing on this one, and then we move on. We move on. Now, God can feel regret like us. God can experience grief like us. He can be caught. He can be hurt by our actions. Now, if God, so God looked at his work and he's like, I got it wrong. I created man perfect. Man went his own way. Man fell. But, Instead of destroying everything, there's a little light. And I'm going to find this little light aflame. That's Noah. And Noah found grace with God. So, I don't know about you, but if I get things wrong, sometimes I beat myself so hard. So hard that I'm not even looking for the little flicker of light that is left. I just pack it all up. I just abandon, I just give up, give in, and all that. I've been kicked myself or getting something wrong. But God shows us here an example that even when we are hurting, we can still look out for that flicker of light, that little hope which we can hold on to. Because the solution, the reason why you and I are here today is because God found grace. Mm-hmm. Noah found grace 
with God. And God paid attention to him. So my question to you, my challenge to you tonight is, in those areas where you are still kicking you're yourself right. and you're always living in regrets for that action, for that mistake, well, God shows us a pattern of how we deal with such things. If it can happen to God, it can happen to any one of us. Some of us live our lives as if we will never make mistakes, as if we're so perfect. We're, and unfortunately, sometimes we expect that of others too. Some of us, we're not perfect, but we expect perfection from other people. I see a lot of people like that. And it always amazes me because I'm like, you, Jesus said, remove the log in your eyes before you consider the speck in somebody else's eye. But I don't want to discuss that tonight. What I'm saying is, instead of your continual kicking and being guilty, guilty, living in guilt, refusing to forgive yourself. Some of us are finding it easy to forgive others than to forgive ourselves. Instead of living like that, God set us an example here. You may have been grieved. You may have been heartbroken. But because God is with you, there's always a flicker of hope, a flicker of light, something you can hold on to. The situation may look impossible, but there is always a flicker of hope because God is in it with you. He did it with Noah. He has a Noah around you. Who's that flicker? And although everything may go down, but there will be an ark that will lead you to safety. Mm. And that's something, that's something which resonated with me when I was preparing this, that if God can say, it grieves my heart to have created man, but no, is a way out. It's the same with you also. I hope that's useful for somebody. Amen. All right. Uh, let's move on. Let's move on. Let's move on. Um, this is interesting. You love this one. Genesis 11, 5 to 7. Genesis 11, 5 to 7. Genesis 11, 5 to 7. We're not going to finish it this week. We'll continue this train next week and possibly the week after. Tosin, you're reading Genesis 11, 5 to 7. 5 to 7. Yes. But the Lord came down. One moment, please. I need to get out of the room. But the Lord came down to look at the city and the tower the people were building. Look, he said, the people are united and they all speak the same language. After this, nothing they set out to do will be impossible for them. Mm -hmm. Come, let's go down and confuse the people with different languages. Then they won't be able to understand each other. Fantastic. Fantastic. <laughs> okay. So let's let's what's the human quality God displayed here? It's more than one. It's more than one. Son, yes. I'm not sure. Just get maybe what? from adults to children. Yeah. Foresight so like you can see what's gonna happen. So you try mm. stuff in the way to like stop the like stop it from happening. Mm, four sides. God demonstrated four sides. That if we leave these people like this, they are united. They're going to get things done. And those things will be against our plans and our purposes for humanity. So let's be proactive and take steps which would allow them to fulfill our vision, not theirs. So God showed, God demonstrated four sides there. I can see where this is going. I'll step in and I'll change that. And I'll stop that from happening. Yes, sir. Um, justified jealousy. <laughs> justified <laughs> jealousy, JJ. What does that, that mean? mean? Um, so that he was jealous because obviously uh, humanity is working together, mm -hmm. which is rare. These mm -hmm. things, but so obviously, um, they were getting closer and closer mm -hmm. to their God's standard collectively. So then, but since God is their maker, mm -hmm. he has control, supreme control over everything they're doing. Mm -hmm. So if they're working against him, like it means that they're straying away. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, so 
My son says justified jealousy, which is, wow, these people have really gotten their acts together. That's the positive. The negative, though, is they would, they they've combined together to go against my will for them, to go against the reason why I have created them. And God said, he says, nothing will stop them. Hmm. So there's another lesson about teamwork there. So for those of us who are loners, we love doing things all by ourselves. God wasn't opposed to teamwork here. He was just opposed to it being done in the wrong way. So two lessons there. One, I have, a, I have an idea. I don't, I don't know whether what I'm going to say makes sense. Go for it. Go for it. I, 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 I know that uh, yeah, in any place there is hierarchy. Yeah. And um, now they want to show that they can do whatever God can do. Mm. They don't want to show the supremacy. Or the, I don't know whether Reference. they were really they were really being arrogant or proud mm. that mm. they can get okay. Uh, we, we are going to meet God there. Let's go. Mm. We have the power to towards heaven. Oh. <laughs> Even the God, God get to God, God uh, in <laughs> heaven, and I don't, I don't know whether it makes sense anyway. It makes so, perfect sense. I'm just thinking: should I open that up? Should I open that up tonight? Do we have time for that tonight, or do we not? But I'll I'll summarize it very quickly, and I'll take it slightly deeper than what you have said. So nice that, that place, sorry. Can I can I add something, please? Okay, yes, please go ahead. Right. Um. Yes, we. I was gonna say um, the power. And I'll talk to you just in a minute. Yeah. I'm just gonna talk about power of synergy, but which you you mentioned, you know, and it's 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 a teamwork, a synergy, and it could. It's just that they diverted it to a negative, you know, a negative. Um, task, whatever. But the positive in it is that if people, if you decide that oh, together we can work as a team and we can move this mountain, yes, we will. Yes. And it's not a case of all seeing ourselves. Like look at the case of Caleb and the other guy when they said, oh, after this, oh, we're, 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 we look like, um, what did they call them? And um, grasshoppers. 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 Oh, and we did, we, we are actually grasshoppers. And they said, no, we're not. We're not grasshoppers. So things like, I'll just give an example. Um, like, password, you know, I don't know the last time you guys went to the US. Everywhere now, you don't know who may, if this one is a male or this one is a female, you don't even know anything anymore. That is what, that is what it is. And you're like, how did they get to this point? It's a, it's a case of, them coming together as a group and as a force that whether you like it or not, we are here and you will listen to us. Hmm. A synergy is, a, as far as they are concerned, is a positive thing. A but how does God handle that? That is my question. Because when you are seen 15, 9, 8, you don't even know the difference anymore. And then do you want to say, um, God, this is not my fault. The authorities gave me the power. And uh, actually, oh, they put different languages, um, languages in their mouth and they were confused. Oh, I was confused because so I don't know. It's um it's good you mentioned this part B of this of this discussion. So I don't know how you're gonna handle that. No, no, so, thank you. Thank you, because that was that was the example you gave is a mini example of exactly what I was going to talk about. Babel. That place where they were building is called Babel. I'll come to you in a minute or so. That was where, uh, and I, I think somewhere in that scripture, it says the place was called Babel. Babel. Probably the next verse. I know that because there God confused their language. Now, historians have it that that building they built went really, really high. And for ages, hundreds of years, that building still existed there, an uncompleted building they had there 
and all that called Babel. Now, it would interest you that in Europe, when you go to the, I think it's the European House of Parliament, yeah. the design of that building is exactly like what they did at Babel. Yeah. And it was basically man again saying, we are the architects of our own destiny. We decide what we do. We will come together. We will unite. We will be one voice. We will be one force. But we're not going to be subject to any religious order or anything. We are the architects of our own destiny. And the building, when you look at the building, at the, outs the, the outside of the building looks uncompleted, just like Babel. Now, that's one iteration of, or iteration? iteration. That's iteration. one iteration of what happened in Genesis 11. The one you have mentioned is another iteration of what has happened. That look, irrespective of what people think, or irrespective of what God himself thinks, a man can be born and decide that I'm going to call myself something else and all that. And when they tried the, okay, is this a social thing? Now they're trying to back it up with science and all of that. But that's just humanity choosing. So that's negative or positive. Either negative or positive. Synergy works. Synergy works. Yeah. Because where people are able to gather together, they're able to do things. And but then what we see from that passage also is God yeah, at God the right time step. has the final say. Hmm. And he will decide what happens. And all of that. And that's why for me, I always say we pray. We just say that, that yeah, Jesus wasn't um, simplistic in his view when he gave us the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name, thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. That covers everything and anything man will ever throw at it. All we need to pray is, Lord, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Tosin. Pastor, look at the case of Nehemiah. It was synergy as well, but it was to a positive... Exactly. Exactly. Thing. exactly. And like I said before, I don't know if we're going to study Nehemiah, but that was the man who didn't, oh no, it was this was a TikTok message. That was a man who didn't hear God. You never read in the book of Nehemiah that God said to Nehemiah. No. It all came from the body. The burden in his heart that I need to do something for God. And he said, the fences are broken. And he said, I'll fix that. And he went and he was able to galvanize people to something positive. So God has given us teamwork as a tool. Let's stop working okay. in isolation or working yeah. against one yeah. another. There are three types of people. Those who just work alone. They don't care what happens to other people. Those who actively work against others or passively work against others and those who work with others. And God wants us to be those people who work together because what was the greatest commandment Jesus gave us? He said, love one another. By these people will know that you are my disciple. When you show love to one another, a new commandment I give you, love one another. He didn't even say love God. I'm not saying just didn't say we should love him. So, that, that, so I'm just saying it was so important for him that we operate in synergy. I was discussing with a brother yesterday, and he was saying, he said, we need to get to a point where if a Christian is preaching on the road and he knows that if I'm taken to a police station, 200 Christians will turn up, a thousand Christians will turn up, a million Christians will turn up to demand my release immediately. He said, if we know that that will happen, there will be more preachers on the streets. Like the right Christians. now, if that happens, what will we do? In our car, we'll take video. <laughs> you know? And we're like, ah! And then we we'll send it to our friends on WhatsApp. Ah, this is shameful. End of. That person is in jail. But there's some religions where you don't mess with them like that. You try it, you're in trouble. Are we saying we should be militant? No. 
but we need to show more support for one another. God valued their teamwork. They were just headed in the wrong direction. Tosi, what did you want to add to that? Well, um, I'm going to change my point, and I just want to say that if God can be disappointed, if God can have all these experiences that we are faced with, mm-hmm. how much more we? Mm. If we can disappoint God, how much people disappoint in us? Wow. But it doesn't mean that we... We accept things that are wrong, but I think that the most important message is to love one another, mm. because I think that that is, I want to say that that changes everything mm. to show That's love to someone, changes. even when you don't agree with it, you can't disagree with someone's lifestyle and not hate them. Mm. And I think sometimes when we disagree with someone's lifetime a lifestyle it is easy for us to be like oh those people i hate them Mm -hmm. and that takes away from in that in doing that you you don't save a life that you could potentially save and i'm not saying that you have to agree or follow if it's wrong according to the bible then we have to stand by that standard does that make sense yeah but I think that because a lot of times when the Bible says something is wrong, I think it gives us license to be like, because the Bible has said that that is wrong, I hate that person or I hate those groups of people. And I think that that is where we're going wrong a lot of the times. And Mm. I just thought that I should mention that. I do not agree with that. It should never be about the person, should it? It should, yeah, be well, I the, feel, it, I it feel, should be about the actions, isn't it? There are things yes, we would never yes. agree on, but that should... How do you pray for people if you don't love them? And the Bible says, even whilst we were yet sinners, Christ died. that's when Christ died for us. He didn't wait for us to be perfect before he died for us. So there has to be that heart of compassion. And I think that's what's often missing a heart of compassion. Of course, we can't be forced to do things we don't want to do or or change our beliefs around things we don't believe in. No, but we must have a compassionate, because if it's not for God's compassion, we won't be alive right now. And God always wants people to come to him. Yeah. So to repent and come to him. And like, sometimes we need to take time out to pray for those people. Yeah. We may, we may hate what they do or we may not like what they do, but we, we, we ate the sin, not the sinner. Because in the high of God, God still created that person. And God is looking forward to a day that person, him or her, will say, Lord, I accept you as my Lord and personal Savior. Exactly. If not, the Bible won't say there is joy in heaven over every sinner who we'll repent. We'll repent. And I, like I always say, when issues like this come up, it's so easy to point to the outward issues, to the things we see around the us and all of that. Yeah. How much more the things that happen on our inside? Do we think lying is better than some of these things? Do we think bitterness is more justifiable before God than some of these things? Do we think anger, unresolved anger on our inside? Do we think division, sowing discord? Among brethren, do we think that's more justifiable? Because we're okay with that. It's okay. Oh, pride, pride. Do we think God, God looks at pride and like, okay, that's okay. That's not as bad as um, somebody sleeping around. No, to God, see, he see, James tells us, he says the same God who says do not like is the same one who says do not murder. Sin is sin before God. So before we throw stones at others, we need to look at our lives. And Jesus said, so will my father refuse to forgive you if you don't, from your heart, forgive others. If we want to enjoy, he says, be ye merciful as your father in heaven is merciful. If we're going to save the world, we have to approach it from a point of compassion. That was what Jesus, that was what Jesus did for us. Last one on this, and then we'll do one more and we'll round up for tonight. So many more, and we'll continue next week. The Bible says, Genesis 11, verse 5, it says, But the Lord came down to see the city. 
Two things there very quickly. Number one, God is interested in everything taking place on the earth. He came down. He's, look, he's, he saw it in heaven. Nothing is hid from his sight. He sees everything. He doesn't need to move to see anything. But because of his, because of his um, earnestness, because of his, because of his interests, he came down. How that happened, we don't know. Well, where did he come down from? How did he come down? I know that, but the Bible says he, he came, came down. down. He came down to visit Adam in the evening as well. Exactly. Yeah. So it just shows you that God takes an active interest in humanity, in humanity and what is happening. I, I said this years ago in one of my messages. Now it was Bible study also, actually. I said two things. This was when I was in Barcelona. I said two things God is interested in on earth. People and land. People and land. Two priorities God has concerning the earth. People and land. He who owns the land is the landlord. People matter to God. Land also matters to him. And those are two things that should matter to us also. People and land and land. Anyways, uh, so that's that. Um, let's take one more. Let's take one more. And I do. I really like that contribution by everybody. Oh, Rishani. Rishani said um, he was in the chat. He said, God like has feelings, feelings just, like us. just like us. God has feelings. He can be happy. He can be sad. And angels don't affect his feelings. Demons don't affect his feelings. Guess who affects his feelings? We humans. And that's just because he loves us so much. So next time, before you do that action, just think, will this make God happy or will it make him sad? Well, forget about the punishment and all of that. We did learn that sin has consequences. But we'll also think, will this, will what I'm doing right now make God happy and all that? Or will he just make it, will he make him, will he make him sad? You know, if, if, if I've turned my Bible on for Bible study and I've just put it somewhere and I'm just doing something else and all that, will that make God happy? Will he make him sad? Let's think about these things. Final one, final one for tonight. Genesis 18. Genesis 18. Genesis 18, 17 to 19. Genesis 18, 17 to 19. Let, let's just read 17 to, yeah, yeah, 17 to 19. Let me read this one. Let me read this one. Okay, go for it. Then. And the Lord said, oh, shall, shall I you? hide from Abraham what I am doing? Mm -hmm. And since Abraham shall surely become a great and mighty nation, and all the nations of the earth shall be blessed in him. Mm -hmm. For I have known him in order that he may command his children and in his household after him, that they keep the way of the Lord to do righteousness and justice, that the Lord may bring to Abraham what he has spoken to him. Thank you. Thank you. So, and the Lord said, shall I hide from Abraham what I am doing? What is the human attribute God displayed here? Honesty. Honesty, thank you. Honesty, son? Um, uh, righteous mischief. Righteous <laughs> mischief. Oh, That's why you doing okay. creative writing. <laughs> Love. <laughs> Justify the <laughs> love, 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 love. Righteous, <laughs> right? No, 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 I, I, I'll come to love in a minute. Let, let, let's just explain oh, that. One. Righteous mischief. Um. So here is the thing. Oh, should I? Should I not? Should I? Should I not? Uh, we don't know the frame of mind he was in, actually. <laughs> to be honest, I was like, should I tell him? Should I not? Should I tell? Should I, Should I tell? So maybe mischief is not the right word, but there was that Consider consideration. Yeah. There was that, yeah. There was that. Just imagine if God doing should I, should I not? Is it he, he, he didn't have to. He didn't should have I to hide from Abraham. It's when you said hide. That, that obviously hide has connotations of mischief. mischief. 
Okay, yeah, from a secondary school point of view, <laughs> hype has a connotation of mischief yeah. and all that. Yeah, so so yeah, I totally agree. Love, transparency. I, I think it's a, um, a case of, you know... Transparency, um, thank you. Yes, go on, sis. I think it's a case of being... Um, you know, you don't... you you have a friend that is very very close to you mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and you you share everything you the yeah. way you talking about there is now something you want to do that is so you're like you know it, it's 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 a kind of like searching yourself searching mm -hmm. yourself deep 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 searching deep of your soul that can i do this mm -hmm. you know if i do this you know i mean and then it, it shows the, the kind of um, val, um, the value. value placed on the friendship, the value placed mm. on that person mm. that, you know, and then that's, I don't know, that's, that's no, all. Think, because sometimes we're in that situation, like, how can I do this without telling this person? And, mm. it's, you know, you could choose not to and just walk away, but what will be the implication of that friendship? Do you want to, so he's thinking, if I do this, Will he, how, how will he, he might, he might feel very bad, the, the friendship might end, and mm. somebody that I truly love, I value mm. this friend, can I do this without telling him? So it's been, it's, 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 and again, it shows the humanness of God that, oh, really, he can be in this kind of situation and he's still struggling with himself. Mm. God's struggling mm. with himself when he can just say, look, I don't care. Look, if you touch the ark, you go. But this is a <laughs> the guy now that is like, struggling within himself yeah Ooh, he, he, i don't know he, he, he weighed his actions should i he weighed his decisions actually it was his decisions he, he was weighing his decisions that based on the relationship i have with abraham would i hide this from him and i i, I don't know about okay. you but even looking at all of these things it just humbles me more about the kind of relationship God wants to have with us. You know, we almost see God as a one-way traffic. We pray to him. Hmm. How often do we see God as someone whom I want to share secrets with us? His own, what if God is saying at this moment, should I tell Vincent, should I not? Hmm. And all that, rather than just, Oh, Lord, help me. Lord, bless me. Lord, do this for me. Lord, I just want to serve you. Lord, I want to please you. If God is reaching out to us in this way, how would we ensure that we don't miss it? But that's a question to take home. Someone so to... said, was it loyalty? So loyalty. Well, loyalty is part of it as well. That Abraham is my friend. Mm. So... But I, I, I like the angle where Sister um, Rita came from, which is the fact that he placed value. We've lost volume. We can't hear you. I can't hear you. Yeah, it's back on. You are muted. They said we are muted. It's back on. Okay. 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 All right. So Sorry. what we did say Sorry about that. Okay. Yeah. Um, okay. Now that I um it was one loyalty to God placed value on that relationship mm. by telling Abraham his innermost innermost, his innermost, innermost secrets. secrets. Yeah. He, having had lunch with Abraham, remember the story? God came down to fulfill. Is, in fact, God came down to get Sarah saved. Because until Sarah got saved, no, 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 not saved. That's not the right word. God came down to get Sarah to believe that she would give back to Isaac. Because until Sarah believes, Abraham's faith was not getting things done. He had to be both of them. That was the purpose. So God came, and thankfully, Abraham caught the revelation, and Abraham prepared lunch for God and the angels and they had lunch with Abraham and God said, okay, yeah, so Sarah will give birth and Sarah said, no. Sarah laughed and God said, but why are you laughing, Sarah? And Sarah said, I did not laugh 
And God said, but you did laugh. And you know, you need to see the movie to understand what happened, what happened there. It, it's, 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 it's just so awesome. I'll say it in two sentences and then we'll round up tonight. Sarah was in the room listening. God was seated with Abraham as a person. And Sarah, when Sarah laughed, it wasn't like a loud laugh, like <laughs> that God could pick up from outside. It was a quiet chuckle in the room that, oh, these men who have been fed, this prophet, these men of God who just come around and they just speak nonsense. That was what Sarah was doing. In the movie, when God said to Abraham, but why did Sarah laugh? And Sarah had and said, but I did not. There and then, God showed up in Sarah's room, appeared to him, to her as a man, and said, but you did laugh. And that was where the conversion came about. And the Bible will tell us in Hebrews 11, and Sarah took faith to conceive Isaac. Until Sarah had faith, Isaac was in common. Abraham had faith, but Sarah needed, Sarah needed faith. So that needed faith too. So after all that had been done, God had accomplished his mission. The second mission was Sodom. God then said, wow, I've just had a nice time with my friend Abraham. Remember Abraham was a friend of God? Will I then go on to do the next project without letting him know? Yes, we completed the first one, but how can I go on to the next one without telling him? And like you said, that just demonstrated loyalty God has to his own. He is Lord. That says he is faithful. He says, even when we're faithless, faithless, he remains faithful because he cannot deny himself. If God is loyal to you, will you also be loyal to God? That's what we need to, that's what we need to take away. That's what we need to take away tonight. And also, like I said, if God could share his heart with Abraham, how do you know that he's not trying to share his heart with you? Why should your relationship be with him, with him just be a one-way relationship where you just pray and then that's it? Something else we need to think about. We can use Let's round it up there tonight. We'll continue next week because we've still got a few scriptures to go through. And then we'll look at the fatherhood of God also. But well, I hope you found tonight's study really useful. Any final thoughts, final questions before we pray? Any comments, any questions, anything from anyone before we pray tonight? Um, All I've learned today is that um, <clears throat> the humanness of God and that, <clears throat> that is, he values friendship. God is, is, is truly... Is a yardstick for, you know, looking at friendship. That's yeah. It. Thank you. Friendship, teamwork. Humility. Humility. Empowerment. Empowerment. He regretted his actions. Suffering broken heart. Yeah. But and still moving ahead. Not throwing in the towel on man. Valuing teamwork. But wanting us to do it the right way. So, yeah, quite a it few things. Proactive, demonstrating. Proactive, exactly. Showing interest. He came down. He didn't need to. We'll see more of that next week. And whatever else. And who God is to us personally as individuals. I thought that was also enlightening. That was also really good. All right. Yes. Let's pray, people. Let's pray as we round up tonight. Lord. Who are we that you are mindful of us? Who are we that you love us the way you do? The Bible says you created us a little lower than the angels and you crowned us with glory and honor. Tonight, we're just grateful that we have a God who is not far away, a God who relates to us, a God who feels what we feel, a God who even before Jesus came, you experienced things that we go through on a daily basis. And for that tonight, Lord, we say thank you for loving us so yeah. and for drawing us closer to you. Everything you've done in coming down to man 
is to elevate us, to lift us up beyond the level we're in, beyond the human level. You've lifted us up to your own level. And for that, Lord, we are grateful tonight. And we thank you for all the lessons we've learned. And we pray, Lord, may we, just, may we be doers of your word in the name of Jesus Christ. Mm -hmm. Thank you for your children whom you brought together this first Bible study of the year. Lord, I pray a special blessing for all of them Amen. in the mighty name of Jesus. Amen. By the time we come back next week, may we have testimonies Amen. of what you've done in our lives. Thank you, Father, for every challenge we have in our lives, Lord, we receive solutions in Jesus' name. Because we're under this umbrella, because we've come together, we join our faith together in synergy and we receive answers for individual family problems in the name of Jesus. Amen. We love you, Lord. We exalt your name. Hallelujah. In Amen. Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. Amen. 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 Wow. Wow. I